Hello everybody and welcome back to the Sir Vagabond Folio Tutorial Series for Photobella. Today we are going to start using the decorative papers for side two of our folio. So we are going to start on the inside, so I'm going to flip this open. We're going to cut this background piece first, so we're going to need a piece that measures seven and three quarter inches by ten and three quarter inches. And for this paper, we are going to use this side of this piece of paper here. Now once we have this piece cut, we do need to cut these notches here. So we're going to need to bring in our envelope punch board if you are using one. If not, you don't have to use this step. Or if you're using a circle punch, go ahead and punch yours. To do this, we're going to go one inch from the side and then one inch from the bottom. And then we're going to bring our paper trimmer in and cut from here to here to remove that piece in the center. Once we have our paper cut, we want to go ahead and lift up the belly band and the entire piece, just let it fall forward. Make sure that your paper fits on here and is correctly aligned with the cuts here. Before we glue this down, just like on the other side of the album, we're going to make a closure with ribbon. So I have actually put two rings on this one and a little piece of black ribbon like I did on the front side. And I'm going to be placing this down here and then I'm going to put the other part of the ribbon on here. So I am going to center this with the center of the flap, not the center of the whole entire folio. So it's going to be slightly off center for the whole entire folio. And I am going to use, just like last time on the front, I'm going to use Fabri-Tac for this step. Next, we're going to glue down the train portion and the back little section of the belly band. Before you do this, if you do not like, if you didn't cover this with paper and you don't like the look of this part of the belly band, you can trim it, but it just makes it a little bit weaker. I'm just going to leave mine as it is. I have some pencil marks on here from where I placed the piece, so I'm just going to erase those off, but I'm gonna leave the black how it is. What I'm going to do is make sure that this is lined up. I'm going to hold this with my finger. I'm going to close this to make sure that it is still where it's supposed to be and working. If it catches on anything, you wanna make sure that you move it over. So now that I have my piece where it needs to go, I'm just going to draw a line and then I'm actually going to draw a line here just so that I can line this piece up too. And then remember, we're going to add a little bit of glue just to this section of the train. We're not going to add anywhere in here. We can add some here as well. So this will hold everything down where the balloon will not be touching the train. So I do have some room on this side here and down on this side here. 
So I'm going to turn this so that it's in frame so you can see where I'm putting the glue. I'm going to put glue on the little tab for the belly band. I'm going to put glue along the wheels of the train. And up through the side here. So this is actually where the balloon is when it's all the way down. So you see that there is room to be able to put some glue, but I'm not going to put glue in all those places because I do want to make a bit of a pocket. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue to hold the edges down so that the train doesn't lift up. Turning this back around, I'm going to close my page and drop that down into place and very carefully I'm going to lift up a little bit just so I can get my fingers in there to hold the belly band down then I'm going to open this so that I can make sure that this is nice and firmed So now we do have room behind the belly band that we can place a photo mat. So if I have my photo mat, it will go under the belly band. It'll catch here on the train. So we could put a bigger belly band or a bigger photo mat in. Next, we're going to cut the piece for here. We're going to cut this to one inch by 10 and three quarter inches. For this piece, I'm going to cut this section off of here. This is the paper that we cut the balloon and the train out of. So I'm going to cut a one inch section off of this side. So I just have exactly one inch from where I fussy cut. And then I'm going to trim this down to 10 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to line this up where it goes, be able to see where that pocket is. It's right here. And down here. And then I'm going to put this on the side so that I know where to mark for the indent how far I need to bring it. I'm going to do that on top and bottom. It's roughly a half an inch on my measurements. So then I'm going to cut out those corners. So I'm left with a piece like this. Then I should be able to slide it into the pocket. And lining it up just to those edges. I need to trim mine a little tiny bit so that it'll fit. And now that it'll fit, I'm going to ink the edges and I'm going to glue this down and then I'll show you the next step. Now that we have this piece put on, we're going to start with the front and we're going to cut a couple of different pieces. First, you're going to cut this journaling card out of paper and it is going to be glued on here to the front. We're going to cut one piece here that measures 3 eighths of an inch by 4 inches to cover here. And we're going to cut out the same paper that we're going to cut from here for this flap. So this flap we're going to cut six and one eighths by four inches. We're going to cut out of this paper here and we're going to be using it for our section here as well as the little piece here. 
So six and one eighth plus three eighths of an inch. So basically we're gonna cut a six and a half inch piece by four inches. Now that I have my piece that measures six and a half by four, I'm going to cut a one, a three eighth inch section off. And this will be the piece for the small side next to the journaling card. So I'm going to go ahead and ink my edges and then I'll show you where these go. I glued my three and one eighth by four inch section here on the left and I've glued my journaling card here to the right side of the flap. And then I'm going to put a closure on here before I place this down. That way it will actually hold these flaps closed. So I'm going to place my paper down where it goes. I'm gonna close this flap and I'm going to bring in this chipboard piece from the Lady Vagabond die cut assortments, it's a keyhole. And I am going to place this where I want this to go on here. And we're going to put a brad through this to make a swing tab so it will swing down this way to release those other flaps. So we want to make sure that this paper is lined up perfectly so we know where to place our piece and pierce our hole. And I'm going to line up my chipboard piece. I'm just centering it. And then I need to remove the little piece of chipboard from inside the hole on the right side. Then I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. I'm going to pierce a hole down through the paper. Taking a brad and the piece, I'm gonna set the piece back on here, insert the brad through the piece and the paper, and then open the prongs on the back to secure the brad. I like to make sure mine is flat so that it's as tight as possible. And then I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm gonna place it over top of those prongs just so that they don't move at all. So now that I have my swing tab on my piece, I can go ahead and glue this down and then we'll start decorating the flaps on the inside next. Next, we're going to open this flap. We're going to cut a piece for this flap and this flap. They're going to measure four inches by six and three quarter inches. I'm going to use this paper for those pieces and I'm going to cut so I'm using this side of the paper. So I'm going to start at six and three quarters. I'm going to cut from the bottom four inches. So I will have the Sir Vagabond image on there. Then I'm gonna cut the next piece four inches. And now you have to decide which image you want to use. Because this is the image on the front flap here, I'm going to use this piece here. So I'm gonna set the other piece aside. I'm going to ink these edges and then I'll be back to show you where they go. So I've decided to put the piece from the bottom on the top flap and the piece from the top on the bottom flap. So now we have those all decorated. For this, this is going to be my photo spread. Personally, I don't like to waste the decorative paper that's gonna be covered by photos. So what I do is use 
presentation paper. It's a little bit um, smoother than copy paper. So I make very thin photo mats where I'm going to place photos and I like to have my photos bordered on white anyway. So I use these in my albums. So I have cut four of these that are going to measure four inches by six inches. The two side flaps, this is going to cover the entire flap so we don't need to do anything with them. The bottom and the top ones, we are going to cut strips of paper for the sides so you will see some decorative paper in here. And then for the middle, I am going to put two small photo mats that are three inches by four inches. If you would prefer to just put another four by six photo mat, you can do that too. But I'm going to do it this way so that it breaks up the images going this way. You can place them like this if you prefer and have a piece of paper down the middle. It just kind of depends on what you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these down. I think I will glue them this way. So I'm going to glue this down and then I will be back to show you how we're going to decorate this and which strips we're going to cut for these pieces. I'm going to use this scrap piece of paper that's been left over from the front side of the folio for my pieces for my photo mats. So I'm going to cut four pieces that measure three eighths by four inches. I'm going to cut one piece that measures five eighths by four inches. So this is where all of my pieces are going to go. They should fit in each of these little spaces by your photos. If for some reason yours don't fit, you can just trim them a little bit so that they will fit. I'm going to glue each of these down, then I'm gonna come back and show you how we're gonna add some of the cut aparts. I've just cut some of these already. We're gonna cut some of these apart from the papers and we're going to glue them on to add some more decoration on the inside of our spread. I've glued down each of my strips and then I have cut out some of the decorative elements from the papers and I have glued them down here. But I didn't glue them all the way down so if you have a photo it will actually slide underneath of here when you place it in. All of these are left open. So even down here, this one's open, it's only glued on here. Same thing with the Dream Big. This piece here is open, only attached in the corners and these pieces here are attached so that everything has the room for a photo to slide underneath of it. You can add different elements. You don't have to do this if you want, but I just think it gives it a little bit more interest and then it adds to the feel of the layout. So that is how I did this spread. So we are finished with this. Now we can close this. Now one of the other things that you might want to do is add some journaling cards or journaling tags. So there are several in the collection that can be used for journaling. They have the paper, um, this was the actual front of the paper pack. So if you use these as journaling cards, you might want to add a piece of paper to the back just so that it's solid. But what you can do is add one of them as a tuck spot and place your journaling card here. So you can still see the paper, but then you have room to journal. An alternative thing that you can do using some of the chipboard pieces, you can take a chipboard piece and place it here. Do the glue only on these pieces so then it will sit here too. Again, it will be removable, but you can then take it out and you can still see all of the paper. So if you wanna add some of those, you can add those into your book as well. The other option is on top of your photos, you can put your photo and then you can have a journaling tag in here too that you can remove and you can read about it but you can also see your photos so there are a lot of different options here where you can customize this to suit you and your personal style so if you like to journal on your photos you can add more of these some people don't like to journal so they don't need the journaling spots but they're available to you if you want to use them next we will be cutting pieces for here and here we are going to cut the papers from here and we're going to be using this whole side of the paper. We're actually going to trim this off and use it too so we can frame our page. 
So how we are going to cut this, we're going to first cut this six and three quarters of an inch. Then from the bottom, we're going to cut it to two and three quarters. And then we are going to cut it from the top three and a quarter. From this piece, we're going to cut both of these long pieces off so we can frame the entire piece we're going to be putting on. So we're just going to trim it off. Next, I'm going to ink the edges on my pieces and glue these two pieces down first. Then I'm going to add these little strips on the border. Now we're gonna take the longer strip. We're gonna start at the top. We're going to line this up with the edge of the frame piece here and the top edge. And then we are going to cut this to the size of this. And we're going to glue that one on there. We're going to take the next piece. And we are going to go from the top corner. Cutting it to the size. And then we're going to take this piece and the small piece from the first cut to create the one down here and it's okay that's in pieces we're going to add something we'll add some decorative stuff so you won't actually notice it so i'm going to glue these down next and then i'll be back to show you what else we're going to do to decorate the cover next i'm going to add the closure on so just like the front piece i have the swivel class that I'm using and some of my gray trim I've taken it to my sewing machine and sewn it on and I've cut this so it's a really small piece it's only right now about two and a half inches long but what I'm going to do I have all of my flaps open so you can see this easier I am going to attach this to my closure at the bottom and then I am going to bring in a piece of paper. I cut this at one and a half by one and a half. I mitered the corners just to give it a little bit of a, a smaller appearance for the corners. And I'm going to tuck my paper underneath my ribbon. I'm going to gluing the ribbon to this. It'll be a cleaner edge, but I want this to be up flush against this flap here, but we don't want it to be over it because it still needs to be able to open and close. So once you have your measurements for your ribbon where you want it to go, you can go ahead and take the paper out and we're gonna crease the ribbon so that there is a fold in it. And then what we're going to do, I'm actually going to insert some brads through the ribbon to make it look more steampunk so it has that metallic feel. So I'm going to take my piercing tool. I'm going to put my cardstock first. I'm going to glue my cardstock to the back of my ribbon. So using Fabri-Tac again for this step. Now that I have my ribbon glued on, I'm going to pierce a hole in the center towards the top. 
through the, the ribbon and down through the cardstock. I'm going to take one of my brads and I'm going to insert it there. Then I'm going to pierce another hole on either side of the one in the middle, adding my brads. On the back side, I'm going to open up all of these prongs. And then I'm going to glue that flap of ribbon over the brads. Now that I have my piece, I'm going to glue this in the center of this flap here. Then I'm going to take one of my chipboard pieces. This one says, there is in all artists a little of the vagabond. I just like it and I thought it goes since it is a sort of vagabond folio. So I'm going to glue this here on top of my ribbon. Once we're finished with that, we're going to take these pieces here and we are going to need one more brad. And I'm going to insert a brad first. I'm going to pierce a hole right down through the hole that's printed on this chipboard piece. And then I'm going to pierce a hole down through this little tiny piece on the chipboard. It looks like a small clock face. And I'm going to attach these two pieces together with a brad. And then I'm going to glue this to the front cover. I'm also going to take Lady Vagabond's cat and I am going to glue the cat here to this side of the front piece. Just using a few things from my stash, I've added a couple of flat back pearls here to all of the centers of the gears, and I use glossy accents on the clock or the compass face to make it look glassy. You don't have to do these things. I've also added some pearls here. These are just some extra embellishments and things just to give it a little bit more dimension. But if you don't have those things in your stash, you don't have to go out and buy them. It's just using whatever you have or you can leave it plain as it is. It wasn't on the supply list. So we're finished creating the second side of our folio. And then in the next video, it'll be the final video. I'm going to show you how to make the inserts for the pockets, the large pockets, and then the small pockets on the inside of the pages.